legs are swinging, fighters broke their backs of children for their wagon load of gold. Come out from out the ground and show us what they've done. Those men in their For the majority of people, these are the typical images of the mining industry. It was very much male dominated and recognised as such. However, women also played a vital role and it's important that their story is not forgotten. Well, I was born in 1919 and 24th of August. And, uh, You're born in Loch Gelly? In Loch Gelly, in, in the coal board houses where my mother and father was and family and my brothers and sisters all worked in the mines. My sister's on the pit head and my brother's d down below. Put in Keith Street, Dunfermline, mm -hmm. 1900. Mm -hmm. the 31st, 8, 1900. Mm -hmm. That's where I was born. And how many was in your family? Twelve. Well, I was born in uh, South Street, what says known in Love Gale as the Tap of the Toon. At 85 South Street on January the 23rd, 1919. Mm -hmm. So, well, when I was about 17, I went to the pit, pit head. Well, I was born in Granger Street in Lock the 10th of September 1916, and then we moved from there to the heart of land. And there were six of us in the family then. I was married when I was 20. Previous to that, I was six years on the Jenny Green Pit Head. I started there in January, early January 1961. I was 14. Well, we've had a hard life. Mm -hmm. Well, when we, uh, my sister and I were 10 but twins, she's not there somewhere, and we to go work bare feet to the school to let my sister get on. She was a teacher. Well, I was born in Monkhaven in 1924, right near the shore, actually. And I was brought up there until I was, um, say, three. They were moved up to Denbeath, which is, you know, right the street up from the Williams Colliery. And my father was in the pit. And my, my uncles were all in the pit. And my brother. So it really is a, a, a mining community altogether. For these women, career choices were limited. She, she went in for, you'd either go commercial or domestic. Mm -hmm. And uh, she told my mother she was going in for domestic. For my mother says that's what we had to do. But she went in for uh, commercial and she got short hand and tightened. When there were a lot of women there, it was just Pithead and service and that were the only jobs in the factories. Well, I didn't like factories, so that was the only work. <coughs> I worked in the West Wings Castle huh? with a lot of lady women, but I got two bob mare on the pants when I worked on the stuff at the pants. What sort of work did you do in Wings Castle? Well, clean the clean for the lady women and, and ham. But they were they wanted to work them, but they didn't want to pay for it, you know. But they still had their pride. What I didn't like about it was that they used to do terrible things like putting money underneath the bead mats in the dressing tables in the sweeties, and the lady used to come along and wipe her finger along the curtains behind you to see if you're doing it right, you know. And in these days, you know, it was uh, ewers and basins and ba putties under the bed or in the little chest. Mm -hmm. And I hated it. I hated it. I mean, we never had to do that in our own home. We always had a mat a toilet. Well, I would go back to the pit ahead again because uh, I'm a person that doesn't like anybody. If I went into service and somebody had come and started to see or we talk dust or anything, I like to be independent. I knew when I was working in a bed, I knew what I was doing. Yeah. No, I didn't like her at all. And I used to say to my mother, 
I'm going to look for something else because she's going behind you like this to see if you've done everything. But it was the putting the money underneath the little doilies and leaving the sweets and things that annoyed me. Yeah. Sneaky. To that. test your honesty, mm -hmm. you know. Their job on the pit head is not one many young girls would undertake today. When I went first onto the pit head, I was terrified. The machinery, the noise and the dust and the, everything was shaking, vibrating with the machinery. And I, I had to go down the steps to where the tables were and they showed where to stand, where to pick the coal. In the dust, some days you couldn't see your, your neighbour across the table. Once there were maybe three on each side of a table. So, uh, when I started, there were about five on each side, but they gradually did away with the women, you know. So it was really, and sometimes you couldn't see your neighbour across from you for the dust, and they talk about dust. Two girls or a man draw the arches off, they go to get weighed to the Czech women, he weighs the coal, and if it's too heavy, well, it's put aside, and a girl's pick to go, what we said, crawl the coal. That was take the stones out the bad hatch of coal the man had sent up. Then when he came up the pit, he was questioned about the bad coal he was putting up. Then after that, Hutch was put there and crowed. You brought the catches back, put them in the tumbler, what we called the tumbler, was a great big shaker thing. You pulled the handle and the shaker went and shook the coal down to the tables. I was at the front of the pit, we were lighting them up again. And uh, that was pretty, you had to be pretty nimble like that. It was a dangerous job because if the cage went past you, they were nothing but the shop. And it was what you called an airlock. And in the winter time, this uh, handle that you, it, it, yeah, well, we called it the charm to the engineman. Uh, if you had your bare hand on it, it used to stick to with the ice. So you had to wear gloves, and you had to be all covered to your head, and you were both dungarees, you know. It, uh, in the winter time, I've seen me all hacks, and I went to the pit head bars to wash yourself. When the war hit you, you felt like green, yes. murder. Oh, oh, anyway, it was hard work, safe, safe work. Anyway, it really was men's work. Accidents were never far away. A lot of the families in Denbeath lost sons and husbands. I think it was terrible. There was a few families lost, you know, a lot of members of their family. My father had an accident and I can remember seeing my mother screaming at the door. I'd be quite young, 10, 11, and he was brought home in the ambulance. Well, I mean, if they were off the road, you didn't get money, you know, and his leg was torn from there up. Big stitches. I can remember that. Well, it was near the end of a shift. And when the, the pit went in, it was that sharp. See what I mean? It went right through my shoe, went right through my toe. But I just carried on to I finished. And then I went home and I showed my mother in. She came my wee base <laughs> to wash. I said, I'm going to get to my work no more. I just said, I said, I caught you all. And she got home my shoe back at my work. You should have reported it. It was my fault. <laughs> I missed the call and I struck my door. <laughs> the disaster I mind was when uh, my man got killed, he got killed. The disaster, the disaster in Fordo was, I think, there were four or five men. No, I think there were only one, two, three men killed, I think, and two got hurt. Mm -hmm. And my man got, that was on the Friday, and my husband got it on the Monday. But he was on the surface. How long ago was that? 42 years past. Two years? Mm -hmm. The 21st of April. Now yeah, that's 42 years. Chuff the land again.
the kites are swinging all along the bottom of this deep black hole. And compensation seemed out of the question, especially for women. They didn't bother with us. They never even left a finger to help us. With a result, we blend it up and we get a pension. It was through goodness and a cold board spot. Uh, it's barely a pound a week. Barely a pound a week is about 95 pence a week. Your gross pension has increased to 98 pence per week, including your total weekly pension amount as the 1997 bonus of 15 pence and the 2000 bonus of 7 pence. I really better about that because see, they're getting what? They get about 24 or 25 pounds a week. And we're like, You're getting 95 pence. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. pounds a week they get. I could remember a man that worked down the pit. He's dead now, he said. They should have gave the union delegates the jail. But amidst the blood, sweat and tears, the human spirit always seeks to find relief. Oh, yeah, the dance uh, would be up for my beard the, the Albert Park, where the football team was. We usually went up there and it started at 10 o'clock. And you come down the road at 5 in the morning, it's just changing between if you were working at all on Saturday. You slept all day then. But what we did do at peace time, they were a wee, just a wee square bit when we broke off for what piece, you know. And one woman had a mouthpiece, and she played the mouthpiece, and we were all dancing. And my hands were black, and we would eat our piece, and we were eating cold dust and everything, you know. You didn't get away to wash your hands. I, we took in our stride, and uh, we had our laughs, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> Sometimes it was terrible, but uh, I didn't really, I don't know whether to talk about it, no, but the miners used to have a, a run where they'd done their, their jobs. And some men were sent in to clear it out, and it was stinking. And it, it went down on the, down the, the wrong thing it onto the table instead of the coal. Uh, it was ghastly. And, it, I had to get all hosed off because it was terrible. <laughs> Another funny thing at Dainbeef, everybody worked in the, the pits, right? But before I ever went to work, through the wall, were Cunninghams, I think they were, a big family, and you could hear the mother shouting to Willie. Willie was one of them. Willie! Uh, and then I would, Willie, uh, you know, he wouldn't get out of his bed for his work. And on a Saturday night was our entertainment, because when when the drunks were coming home, it would be 10 o'clock, of course, pubs closed then, and if there'd be something going on right at the back in the street, somebody fighting, you know, up through the window, you know, <laughs> this was your entertainment on a Saturday night waiting to see who's going to be off the punch up and then Willie would be one of them. Chug the land again, big eggs are swinging all along the bottom of this deep black hole. Chug the land again, big eggs are swinging factors broke the backs of children for their wagon load of For all miners and their families, hard work was a normal part of life. But for women, their lives held extra responsibilities. In a family of six, three boys and three girls, when my grandfather came home from the war, in the First World War, he had been affected by the gas. But he'd been away, and my grandmother had been bringing up these three boys and three girls on her own. And then when he died, she, they were still, she was still bringing them up on her own. So you had to be tough. But my mother, she had pneumonia twice when she was a, a, just a child. And my grandmother used to say, and we had the death sheets all broke out for her, you can. 
much. And yet she survived. Mothers had a difficult time coping with the demands of family life in a coal mining community. And uh, in the first one in Canard Street, we had no water at first and we had to go and get pails of water outside, the well outside on the street. And my mother had to carry that in and fill the boiler up for the washing and kennel the fire underneath to get hot water. And she used to do that for the, my brothers coming in for the pit, for there were no baths. But my mother was a gem. But my daddy was off his strut. He was off his strut. I even made a wee garden for my mother in front of her one day. You know, went the way up to, what do you call it? The plantings. And I brought June Peel's earth. And put her and put seeds in and made her a wee garden. Just some for the make her happy, you know. There was no, what you would say, proper fireplace. It was just a range. And when my mother, I couldn't see my mother yet, <laughs> it was the, the set-in beds. And we had mattresses. And she brought them out once and there was bugs on the bed. And she was on the top of the stair burning them with matches to get them off. And in the hall, on that wall, when you went in, there was a bedroom and then the living room. That wall had thick, thick, glossy paper on it, like flower pots and things. And when we started taking them off, there was about six layers of paper. And underneath the paper was these bugs. In fact, we used to hear the mice running through in the walls. So needless to say, there was mouse traps here and there, trying to catch these mice all the time. And housing conditions left much to be desired. Just a room, just a, one end just and a room. scullery. Uh -huh. And your cooker was in at your fireplace, and your toilet was outside, and your washes was outside now. Then, the gable end of the house collapsed and went into the next building, so I had to move. And I moved to Fulford Street. The house had a a big bedroom and what they called a we called it a kitchen and a bedroom and a scullery. And you had a an inside toilet and the scullery it was the the water, just cold water, you know, the hot water. Luxuries were few and far between. No my dad would have been blind, he had a a radio with the with the ear things, and the, he got that through his him being blind, the blind him being on a blind pension. My sister had a, a what do you call a gramophone, mm -hmm. a tall one in a cabinet, and she used to roll, wind it up, put the record on, and. The, my mother used to sit and listen to that. And she li liked to sing all um, Scottish songs and Irish songs she liked. And that was her enjoyment. We used to sit and sing with her in front of the fire. She always wore a penny, her uh, tap her. If she got a new penny, that's, that's something <laughs> for her. <laughs> Ah, so I say, you, you leave an eight hours the shift to 24 hours because you don't have to be on hand if they're kids. Mm -hmm. You never know when they're getting up and something like that. Although the men had to deal with accidents in the pit, their wives had different pressures dealing with the consequences of these accidents. No, just the two of my brothers went to pit. One got his back broken. How did that happen? Well... And that's it, in Valleyfield. It would be a fall, I expect. Uh -huh. And he died in the Longmore Hospital in Edinburgh. No, my mother died two years before the war. Well, my three brothers were lost during the war. But the other two, they were married, they were minors, but they died with this pneumoniosis. The two of them died in their 60s. And then when my dad had the accident and lost his sight, 
I got two hundred pound. That was the compensation I got, and they were all asked to feed and keep. And he, he got ten shillings a week and uh, free coal. That's that was what he got free coal. I had a good life, and I, I've had a good life all my life. I think really. I had a hard life. I had to work hard. Mm -hmm. My man was off five years with rheumatics around his heart. And the doctor said he'd drop in a minute. Well, it's taken and washing, knitting, make carpets, to make an honest shilling. And again, mothers and daughters had other tragedies to contend with. With the scarlet fever. And I could remember the two boys across the way, one of them, and his chum, fell into the coal bing at New Rage. You know, they used to have the coal tips. Mm -hmm. They must have been up there playing it in the fair and, and it was, of course, it's burning it's on cinders mm -hmm. and they were just incinerated. That's why you were never allowed to go out of the street because there was the railway, there was the coal bing, there was what they called the Klondike up the sea road, which was like a swamp. People drowned in there when the ice was on it and they used it as a skating rink. And people, kids drowned in there. And uh, there were boys up on the pit, he'd capering and throwing things around. And the watchman came and they ran off. But my Uncle Shuey and Abby was walking through the woodyard and he just nabbed them, said they were trespassing, and took them up to the police station. And uh, they were uh, tried and told they would get the bit shrod and uh, so many strokes to learn them a lesson, not to trespass. <laughs> and um, all the folk in Loch Kelly, most of them was up at the town house and up at the police station, booing and hissing and telling them to let them go and not to do that. If her uncle Abe wasn't as strong, he died no long after it. And uh, my brother, took the full force, but my uncle A.B. collapsed uh, after the first stroke. And I think it was after that that it was put a stop to. Just as before, the human spirit rises above the seemingly impossible odds. Keep looking on the bright side, I see. <laughs> Keep looking on the bright side. I wish to call it the Shillandash because it, uh, that, that's all it cost. And it used to take us to Edinburgh and back the same night. And we used to go doing Leith Walk and Jerome's, the photographer, was there. And we used to get our photos taken. And uh, and then we went to a show, and it was uh, I always remember it. It was the King's Theatre, and it was uh, called, the show was called the Rocket, <laughs> and we got glasses gone in. Uh, I think it was a red and a green one. So when they started throwing something for the stage, you thought it was going to hit you. <laughs> it was a minor. Uh -huh. We just went to it in the sea, but what they did was they, there was a hut there for the, the boats and all, you know. But what they did the night before, they went to the pub and they got some crates of beer. And they put it on the boat the day they were gone out. But they were a boy had an accordion and you never heard the licking. You want to hear this accordion out in the water, you know. Uh, it was a hard life, but we we accepted it and uh, we didn't grumble, you know. We got on with it and didn't grumble. I never grumbled, never said to my mother, why can I not get this or why can I not get that? I can't, uh, she couldn't do it. We have much to thank the pit head lasses for. No, nobody seems to bother about the pit head lasses. They're gone and forgotten about that's for sure. Let's make sure they are never forgotten. 